a scientist and a priest. They shouldn't be in one room, should they? Oh, they should. They should. <laughs> The Enlightenment presented God as the God of the gap. Unfortunately so. So, whatever we don't know, we say, well, this is God. And once we know, God is absent. H how do you feel about it's that? It's a very dangerous position to take. The more science finds, the less are the gaps. Whereas I prefer to say that science is investigating how the universe works not whether or not there is a mind behind it. And it's a bit like you know, going into the kitchen for a biochemist and taking a piece of cake. And you could do an amazing analysis of the piece of cake. You could, you could come to a conclusion about what processes must have gone on in order to bring it to that state. But that does not eliminate the possibility that Auntie Mary made it. <laughs> and, and so explaining how the cake works doesn't remove a gap. It simply acknowledges that there may be a mind behind it. So are you telling me it, it, you have never experienced a, a collision? Not so much a, a collision as a, as a kind of a hold up in the road, because the evolutionary process requires genetic change to occur. Uh, and some of the genetic changes that occur uh, are harmful to the creature or the person that has that genetic change. For me, there's a little bit of a problem there that suffering is therefore built into the evolutionary process. And I haven't yet resolved that in my mind, if I'm really honest. That's a big statement, John. It's a very big statement. And I ask myself the question is, why did some of those genetic changes have to be harmful? And it's the question that causes David Attenborough, for example, to say that he could completely believe in, in a mind behind all this. But the fact that evolution has come up with harmful changes makes it hard for him to believe in a God who loves him, a personal God. And I think you know, we need to be very honest about that. The physical scientists have the same problem, incidentally, in that um, tectonic plates and volcanoes cause a lot of suffering. And so uh, suffering is, in a sense, built into the structure of our planet, not just the biological part of it. On the other hand, my experience of God is that he shares our suffering through Jesus uh, and can come alongside us in our suffering. Science pointed at God and God pointed at the science? I, is that tr I, is true? They're like this. Okay. They're interdigitated, I think. Um, I, I very much like what Copernicus said all those years ago uh, in Krakow. He, he said that it, investigating how the heavens worked was a form of worship of God because it was looking at the work of God. Uh, and he went on to say, he, surely it is more pleasing to our creator to have knowledge than ignorance. When you think about the 13.8 billion years of the, of the universe, uh, and you think about what happened at 10 to the minus 43 of a second after the Big Bang, that's a, a time that makes a, a blink of an eye like an eternity, I'm just reduced to state of awe. What we have found out in my lab, for example, it enhances one's view of the beauty and the cleverness of the Creator. And the hair at the back of your neck stands up because nobody else in the world knows this apart you two. And that, but I'm thinking, actually, God knew this already. <laughs> <laughs> but now I discovered it That's again. Right. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a wonderful feeling, it's, isn't it's it? It's a wonderful feeling, yes. Uh, and it does, it does, it does induce worship. I, I can't put it any other way. It induces awe and wonder and then worship.